I previously reviewed Sony SoundForge Pro for Mac 2. This program I'm having a little look at here isn't available separately as far as I know, but it does come with Sony SoundForge Pro. And it was a little, would have taken too long to have a look at it in the other review, so here it is. It's a batch audio converter, it's standalone, you don't just launch it from SoundForge. It's not just a dialogue in that program, it is its own standalone audio converter. As you can see, I've already added an MP3 here. You can add more. Okay, so I've added a couple just to, because that is the whole point. You know, it's not just to convert one file at a time. It's primarily there so you can do a batch of perhaps even 10, 20, whatever. Here you have save, open, new. Add your files or remove files from up the right. You can click on one here, add a plugin. So you can add, say, a compressor. There you go. That audio file there now has a compressor, M compressor, uh, I have installed, added. You can turn it off here, turn it on, and click this, which actually brings up its native dialog, which is very good. I'm glad it does that click off of it and it disappears. If there's any presets that it picked up, it'd be listed here. You can then uh, have that, add, it will add it to the whole lot. You can then edit its title, basically it's ID3 tags. You can edit its title, artist, album, copyright, publisher, engineer if you want to, description, genre, date created, and even add a cover art so you can add artwork such as a poster or cover art to it like you often do with say a podcast and when you export it as mp3 podcast you often will have cover art put onto it so i'm glad to see that it does have that option there then you can select an output format let's say you want to output them or as mp3 You've now selected MP3 there. You can then select a preset such as CD quality, mono, or DVD and Blu-ray quality stereo, or CD quality but stereo instead of mono. You can append something to it. Location, the same as where the original file already is, or select a custom output location. To the left here, this is all just basically a file browser to find your files quickly and drag them across. You may want to just close it out of the way and not use it. I don't tend to use those file browser dialogues. From up here, you can check for update. As you can see, I'm using the current version at the time of making this video, 1.0.3. You can get to the about box. You can go to file, save as. You can go to edit, which is basically nothing much, just cut, cut, copy and paste. View to show the media browser again, or press Command 1. Probably It'll probably be Control 1 on Windows. Customize your toolbar here. Go to Jobs, Run, or C Control, or Command R. Or you can click it here. Window, and Help. Now that is done. Now let's just add a basic title here. Now I'm going to run. As you can see, there's a progress bar down the bottom left hand side that goes across, all the way across to the right. It finished converting Oh the Horror.mp3, which is a piece of music I made in GarageBand, pretty quick. I think that is down to the fact. That it, it was already an mp3 and we are basically putting it to an mp3 which is what it already is so there's less it needs to think about with pod3.aif that is not an mp3 so it had a little bit more work to do now it's done it except it says it says done on both here for some reason there's a dot here with a, a circle here with a tick and as we can see it says it opened it it applied m compressor it rendered the mp3 audio and then it was complete we have a little different symbol here it looks like something may have gone wrong 
it says open in the file, apply in the M compressor, then when it's gone to save the uh, output file, it has had an error. This file contains unsupported compression. I have no idea why that has failed. The only th thing I can possibly think is perhaps it doesn't support opening and exporting from an AIF file and exporting it to an MP3. But if that is the case, why has it allowed me to open a .AIF file? If it, that format is not supported, it shouldn't have let me open it be to begin with. So I'm not sure what's gone wrong here. So what's my impressions of it? Well, apart from that silly error on that one file, if you are exporting and cha changing and exporting or converting a lot of audio files, it's very handy to have. Would I buy just it? No, or I certainly wouldn't spend much money on just buying this if it was for sale standalone. However, as an addition, a free addition to Sony SoundForge Pro, it's handy to have and it's good it's included and could help you out a lot if you need to do a lot of batch work on the audio files. Not something I would buy separately, but you know, it isn't available separately, I'm just saying. So, a good addition to Sony Sound 4 Pro. And if you have any questions, just ask me in the comments and I'll try to reply and help you out if you've got a question about how to use it or if it has a feature, something like that. Thanks for watching. Please like and share this video. And if you could do me a huge favor and subscribe, as it only takes a few seconds and will help me out a lot. Thanks.